Okay, uh, hello YouTubers. I want to go over uh, some of these questions I've got on this uh, last video. I'm going to call this one Death of the Rocket Stove Part 3. Uh, I've laid this out a little more mathematically. I think it's maybe a little easier to understand. A um, guy asked me a question which brought up a, a, a good answer or, or a very pertinent thing to greenhouses. And really it's not just to greenhouses. This is uh, to any house that you might have or any structure you might have. So if you need to find out how much heat that you need to have in this particular structure to uh, keep it warm, there's a formula for that. And the formula for that is area divided by the R value of the wall times the delta T will equal how many BTUs you need an hour. And then you multiply that by 24, obviously that would be for the day. Area equals all areas of the wall so uh, it wouldn't equal the floor, it would equal the uh, all walls and the uh, roof if the roof is uh, whatever material it is. Uh, the R value would be of each particular wall. Um, I've got some R values up here. I don't know if anybody knows or is familiar with what the R value of uh, glazing choices are for greenhouses. And then the delta T, what is a delta T? Delta T would be the temperature difference you need uh, on your worst day. So let's say your worst day got down to zero and you wanted to keep your plants 70 degrees, your delta T would be a uh, 70 degrees, your di temperature difference on your worst day. Uh, greenhouse uh, design has a lot to do with this. Uh, what I mean by that is, uh, I'm going to turn the camera here so you can get a better view. Let's see here. I don't know if you can see this or not, but uh, four mil plastic has an R value of 0.83. Six mil double plastic is uh, 1.43. Three mil single glass is 0.95, almost one R. 10 mil double wall poly is 1.87. That's the two layers of poly with the W's in between it. Uh, and up to five wall poly, it only goes to 3.03. And one thing to note, as you go up on your R values in your glazing choices, you have to consider the diffusion of light. Uh, the more light you diffuse, uh, the less plant, uh, you know, it's spread out, it's not uh, as intense, the less dense uh, the, the light is. So it, uh, it does affect your light as it goes up. Um, because this equation works out like this, I drew this greenhouse here. It depends on what you're really drawing, and I drew on this to uh, make a point here. Uh, if this was the north, and this is the south, and this is the only glazing from here to here, right? And this is straw bale wall here. This would be a northern straw bale wall, and probably an uh, easterly end and a westerly end. And uh, you put this roof area over the top of the of the greenhouse and uh, the reason you do that is that leaves a spot for this heat to get up in here and set up in here and curl around in here you'll hold a lot more heat now I learned this by studying passive solar houses they got them out in California Montana and any of those houses that they actually use the passive solar on the ceiling you whatever you gain by the solar uh, gain you're losing through the R loss because the glass is so low on the R. So really if you're going to have a solar gain, you need a spot to catch the heat, the convection at the top of it. The reason I'm pointing this out is, is it's because your area divided by your R. Well, if you had a 10 by 10 uh, greenhouse, then the 10 by 10 greenhouse have somewhere around, roughly about 600 square feet of uh, surface area. Well, if it's 600 square feet and you're dividing that by less than 0.1, well, obviously it's going to be 600 times uh, your temperature difference, which is like 70 degrees. You're going to keep your plant 70 degrees out when it's zero. Uh, then you're talking about 42,000 BTUs, okay? So that's, that's quite a bit. Now, if this is a straw wall, and the ends are straw and you've got a heat catch here with an insulated top 
then this surface area here is going to be the only number that's going to be divided by the 1, which is the R value for your glazing or your plastic. And these walls here are going to be R55, which if you average out the area, you've got considerably less, you know, low R value, which you're going to hold the heat a lot better. So if you're planning on growing plants uh, year round, uh, like tomatoes, if you're going to light them, and if you're going to try to heat them, a roof set up like that to catch that heat really catches a lot more heat. Also, this awning here, how long this would be determined, you know, if the high sun, it would block some of it in the summer, and the low sun, it would let it pass through in the wintertime. And go ahead, and this is a black barrel in here, this would be your solar gain, right? So I just wanted to point out that some of the, the northern and the top wall here and the cutting down on the surface area of the glazing, it'll cut down on your light, but you're losing all your cool to the north side. You're not getting solar gain to the north side. So this design really does, mathematically speaking, it really affects this, how this requires. Um, and uh, so I've had a lot of people bucking me about the water. Uh, I'm trying to still make my point clear about how much heat water holds. Uh, I did a little more math for you just to give everybody a better idea. A uh, 1500 watt space heater uh, puts out about 5100 BTUs, call it 5000 BTUs, okay? 5000 BTUs in an hour. Now, just for uh, gee whiz purposes, uh, 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 1500 watt obviously that's about it, it takes about 3100 BTUs an hour uh, on, put out on one of 1500 watts. I'm sorry, uh, that's not right. I got confused there. I'm not sure what I just said, but it's wrong. <laughs> anyway, it's uh, 5000 BTUs for an hour on a space heater. Now, 55 gallon drum, just talk about the heat capacity of water, it takes 1334 BTUs to heat one gallon of water from 40 degrees Fahrenheit to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's a dip, uh, differential temperature of 160 degrees. So if you've got a barrel in a, in a greenhouse 200 degrees, okay, uh, 55 gallons would be equivalent to 73,700 BTUs uh, which would be one 55 gallon drum will hold 73,700 BTUs, which is equivalent to 14.74 uh, hours burn on a space heater. So can you imagine that that much heat, you turn a space heater on for 14 hours, and that's how much heat a 55 gallon drum of just water holds at 200 degrees. So before it got to 40 degrees, a 55 gallon drum would release 73,000 and 700 BTUs, and that's a mathematical fact. Uh, somebody said something about insulating water. I wanted to bring up that uh, water automatically stratifies. It'll come up into layers, so if you're thermal cycling, your cold will come out of the bottom, go to your loop, and, uh, and go back up, and it'll automatically th uh, stratify. Water does stratify, and, it kind of, and, and because it stratifies, it kind of insulates itself to some degree. Uh, in a barrel. Uh, when you do that grow bed here down low for low growing plants, one back here I'm sitting on top of the barrel for high growing, growing, growing plants. Again the barrels are your thermal mass uh, catching your heat. So with this here you can figure out what you're going to need to uh, the angle of this too. The angle of this, you know, it's uh, all windows have a solar magnification coefficient. Uh, depending on where you're at in relation to the uh, equator is where you need your glass somewhere about 30 degrees, 33 degrees will get you the uh, where we're at and get you the uh, most uh, solar magnification coefficient. So that's really pertinent, your overhang's pertinent. And you can see mathematically that these other walls are very uh, pertinent to the overall how many BTU requirements you need. Um, so uh, I did a little math problem here, and it was for a 10 for 10 square foot uh, greenhouse. And uh, so I got a 600 square foot area of wall space, because I got four walls, 10 by 10. Uh, I'm just counting them as 80, eight foot high piece. 
uh, that's 80 times uh, 4, that's 320, and then uh, 320, and then half the roof and half the roof. Uh, 600 is is uh, a good estimate for a 10 by 10. That would depend on the pitch of the roof, but that's close. 600 square feet. And since we only have an R1, it would be 1 divided into 600, and then it would be times 70. So a 10 by 10 greenhouse needs 42,000 BTUs per hour at an R1 insulation value to keep it at 70 degrees when it's zero degrees outside, okay? So once you've went through this math and uh, you can uh, determine how much heat you need, and then I'm gonna turn the camera one more time and show you I've got some other figures up. And these are, uh, I don't know if you can see them. I'll read them off. Uh, electricity, depending on what you're paying for electricity, 9 to 11 cents a kilowatt hour. Electricity has uh, 3,413 BTUs in it uh, in one kilowatt hour. Gasoline has 116,000 BTUs in a gallon. Uh, diesel fuel is 130% more energy than gasoline, which means that diesel fuel has got 128.5,000 BTUs per gallon. So you can see that if we need about 42,000, that it would, uh, uh, a gallon of diesel fuel, if you burn every bit of it, it's totally efficient, it would heat your greenhouse for about three hours, right? Because that's basically uh, 128 divided by 42, somewhere around three hours, right? A uh, little point here, waste vegetable oil has 120,000 BTUs per gallon. Uh, that's really good. Um, drip feeding these stoves, waste vegetable oil, a lot of BTUs there. Uh, hardwood or pellets is uh, 16 million BTUs per ton. So once you do this math here and you find out how much you need an hour, obviously you go times 24 is how much you need a day, right? Uh, and then times 24 and then it would be times 7 would be a week allowance. Uh, times 30 would be a month allowance. So you can easily figure out how much wood, gas, or whatever you're going to need a month. And if you put your cost to them, you can even figure out what it's going to cost to heat that greenhouse. Now, I want to get back to, I didn't, I didn't, I built a lot of rocket stoves. I didn't make this set of videos to criticize the rocket stove. Uh, it seems a lot of people got a lot of uh, personal investment in it. I did a lot of them too. And I, and I think they still have their, their area, uh, their place. Uh, but the water is so superior to the cob, the earth, and the sand. Uh, it needs to really be considered and looked at. So uh, I did a little math problem for you. So your rocket stove, a hardwood has basically got uh, 18 to 24 million BTUs of uh, heat in it per quart of wood. If you boil that down, wood has somewhere between 8,000 and 8,500 BTUs per pound of hardwood. Okay, so at 8,000 BTUs per unit of hardwood, uh, and you need 42,000 BTUs for a 10 by 10 greenhouse, unless your your rocket stove, I don't care, let's. Let's say you're getting 100% and you're storing 100% people are like, rocket stove, so great, so great. Okay, okay, okay. If, you're, if you've got this greenhouse with a modest need of 42,000 BTUs, you need to burn five pounds of wood every hour on the hour. So that means uh, if you're loaded up once an hour, you need to be out there. If you can burn five pounds in one load on a rocket stove, then you need to be out there every hour. So even you say, well, it's an efficient burn. Yeah, well, let's say you're getting all of it out of there. You still can only get, I, I, I don't think you can get five pounds in it. Five pounds would be a fairly significant chunk of wood, but let's say you can get five pounds. If you get it, five pounds of wood, that many BTUs needs to be released, and it would have to have another five pounds in an hour if you was going to store any extra into the thermal mass. This is where you get into the uh, practicality of a small burn chamber that a rocket stove has. Because unless you're burning 
five thousand or five pounds of hardwood and every hour on the hour you're not keeping up with the net demand period no matter how much you're storing it compared to being able to throw 30 40 50 pounds of wood into a into a, a, a furnace so I think that uh, I think that uh, brings a lot to light there uh, I hope this helps you guys figure out you know your design and uh, how much you're going to need. It'll show you how much energy costs you're going to need. Uh, let's see. Did I touch everything? Yep. So, anyway, unless you're uh, burning the five pounds of wood every hour in the rocket stove in a 10 by 10 green, even in a small 10 by 10 greenhouse. And I'm telling you, I don't think you guys are, you know, you don't think it's getting done. Not from what I've seen. Uh, maybe you got an 8 or a 10 inch, maybe a 12 inch rocket stove. Uh, but this is a great way to uh, see. Now you can even figure out, you can do the math and figure out how much your cob is holding too. Your cob, your sand, your earth has got a heat capacity of 0.2. So it's not too hard to figure this out, see how much you're storing, see how much you're not storing, and get a really a realistic look at uh, what your needs are in the, uh, in the heat. All right, hope this helped. Thanks for watching.